Hey guys, back again with another episode of Digital Artcast. Um, running on now our fourth year, and uh, yeah, or is it third year? I forget. But uh, but yeah, it's been a while. It has been a while um, since I think the last one was in December. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been an interesting couple of months for me. Um, basically pushing this um, kind of 3D narrative or 3D work I've been doing and some kind of hardcore studying. Some freelance gigs, so it's, it's it's been busy time, and I've not really managed to get an episode in. But I wanted to just get one out and, and do an episode because um, it has been a while, and I'm trying to stay on the, the kind of path of at least one a month. So um, I managed to uh, I say bump into, but managed to come across another 3D artist also, um, and he has been putting out some rather amazing content on YouTube and ArtStation, um, tutorial wise, and, and you know just general knowledge for for young artists. Um, and I thought his stuff was so incredible. I thought I would get him on to talk. Um, also because, you know, like in the past, I'd said we'd done more kind of legends in the field, Mark Burnett, Scott Robertson. Um, so, you know, we talked to these guys who've had these careers for, you know, 20, 30 years. Um, but I wanted to start focusing on, uh, well, like with Ian Vickner, I wanted to focus on people who were kind of young to the industry or had just kind of started and get their view on how they're coping with the industry as well. Because, yeah, asking Scott and Mark to retail their their times of just joining those companies um, because it was a while ago now. It's, it's a bit harder. So it's, it's good to have someone who's kind of just at the cutting edge like me, just about to start. So so today we're talking to Moses St. Fleur. Um, and Moses um, at the moment is uh, an artist up in, in Montreal, Canada, working for CyberConnect. Um, and he's on the show today to talk to us. So thank you very much, uh, Moses, for giving up your time and uh, welcome. Hey, what's up? You can hear me, right? Yes, uh, I can hear you now. Yes, yes, I, I, I have unmuted you. You're, you're able to talk. <laughs> okay, sweet. Thanks for the intro, man. Yeah. Like, I'm good though. I'm good. It's pretty cold out here, and you know, I'm from Miami, so getting used to the cold is probably never going to happen for me. Oh uh, yeah, that's well. I'm from Scotland, so th- we are just born in the cold. So it's. Yeah, temperatures for us are, are, are not a thing. But yeah, I can imagine Canada, I've been told, I know people across like, in a couple of studios like EA and stuff, and, and yeah, they say that some of their winters are quite harsh. So um, like I, I honestly so, thought I'd never experienced negative temperatures in my life until I came here. I remember one time I was walking, wow. and two minutes into the walk, I almost just passed out, dude. Like, <laughs> oh, wow, that cold. Me, dude. Like, my face was, wow. you know when you walk outside in the cold and your face just starts to hurt? <laughs> oh, wow yeah I've, i don't think i've actually experienced that but yeah. <laughs> so so is that what was the coldest that we get in miami was it was it oh, quite no. warm there I'll all the time like in the winter 50 something degrees wow fahrenheit, yeah for fahrenheit, fahrenheit that's still like, yeah that's cold in miami that's cold. yeah 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 that's that's a mild day but oh my god that's that's like our summer that's like you know wow. temperatures we would be outside sunbathing in so yeah, it's, it varies. In Miami, obviously, where it is on the coast, it's yeah, it's prone to beaches and partying. So that must be a, that must be a weird kind of even just lifestyle change moving from what I would assume is more like a party town. Although I don't know Miami in depth, I just know the touristy bit. But you know, um, I'm imagine it'd be a, quite a, a kind of culture shock moving up there. Um, yeah, like I feel like people here are more approachable, and it's like I don't want to use the wrong terms, but like I feel like people in Miami are kind of more like, you know, like not aggressive, but they're not really too like <laughs> friendly when it comes to like strangers. Or, like you go up to someone random, and then they'll look at you weird, like "Yo, like why are you talking to me?" Sometimes. But, yeah, because like, like the last thing I heard from Miami was the guy who had the bath salts basically trip and went around and oh ate people's God, faces. Dude. So, like, the, the, dude, the Florida. I, can I curse on here or no? I'm not. Yo, fuck oh, it. Yeah, okay, right, go, go, go. <laughs> okay, so yeah, man, Florida headlines, yo, fucking crazy. You always see something to start with Florida man does this or does that, like it's crazy. Man. We got yeah. like the craziest headlines. I could imagine, yeah, because I, I think obviously between where you are just now and where you before, that is obviously it's the difference between America and Canada, and people have always said Canadians are a lot more approachable and friendly when it comes to just random conversations, because yeah. I don't know, like even LA, like you know, people I know who work there within a lot of the, the California studios have said that, you know, the city can be a bit harsh sometimes and it's really expensive to live there. And like, especially in LA, there's like 7 million oh. people in one city. It's, oh God, yeah. So yeah, Canada for me would be a good retreat, I think. Um, Canada's dope, like I said though. earlier. It's dope though. Like it's super affordable to live here. Like everyone's chill. Like it's, it's cool. Yeah. I, I like it. Yeah, I could imagine. No, I mean like 
yeah, again, people have known, I think the first kind of guys I knew up there, like I started the podcast a couple of years back with a guy called Colin Cyril, and Carl, Colin uh, was working out of uh, a place called Elliot Animation, um, and he he was, uh, he was loved it up there, like he said, Canada, he's been to a couple of different places, but Canada is just such a lovely place to live, and yeah, I think, like you said, it's very affordable, people have good healthcare and stuff, and, yeah. and, and generally crime's quite low, so yeah, if you want to kind of live anywhere, it would be a good place to live, but, but yeah, CyberConnect as well, I mean, what was the... The attraction for working there was it the projects was it you know was it just a job at the time it was something you wanted to do or you mean like how i got started like working here like how i got the the job here yeah well we can we can maybe even dive into that but i think maybe even better be better to go back because um like kind of how long you've been in the industry okay. and how you got started okay. all right, so, yeah all right man there's so many angles go. i could approach this from <laughs> okay so I think it's dope yeah. that you invited me on here, first of all, because, you know, like you said in the beginning, um, there's a lot of podcasts and like videos with like, you know, industry veterans, people who's been working in games for a long time. You don't really hear too much yeah. about like the new guys coming in. And exactly. I'm definitely one of those new guys. Um, yeah. Professional. But still, produ- still producing awesome content, though. Oh, man, that's I try to. <laughs> I think, like, I'm happy you think that. <laughs> Um, but uh yeah man like okay professionally like triple a studio wise i've been in the industry for six months now okay and six months are almost six months but six months Mm. and before this like i was in school okay let me let me backtrack so i graduate high school i go to college i didn't really know what i wanted to do right so i met i majored in computer science or some shit like that but I was just taking like the general education classes, the classes you have to take no matter what major you choose. So I didn't really right, take yeah. any major specific classes yet. So I was able to transfer my credits to a digital art school. The school is called Digital um, Media Arts College in Boca Raton, Florida. Okay. So I went there for computer animation at first because I thought I wanted to do animation. But yeah, the mill. <laughs> I got there and I was like, this isn't really that fun. To be honest, to me, yeah. for me, it wasn't yeah. really that fun. Honestly, I got so frustrated. I was like, yeah. okay, something's not right yeah. here. So I also had to take like modeling and like rendering classes. So when I got those classes, I was like, man, this is really fun. So then I was like, okay, I think this is where my focus needs to be. So I ended up switching from animation to game art. Oh, cool. So I went to the game art course. And, you know, that's where I thought I wanted to be, too. This is funny. So I ended up switching back to the animation (laughs) course because I just wasn't. I didn't agree with how the game art course was um, structured. So but the animation port like a major allowed me to still do like model lighting and texturing my environment art stuff still. You kind of have like two routes you could go to. You could go with like the animation route or you could just go with the model lighting and texturing route. And I just went with the model lighting and texturing. So, mm-hmm. you know, during school, um, I was just trying to like get my name out there because I wanted to graduate with a job. Like I was so scared that I wouldn't be able to graduate with a job, dude. Like, oh my man, yeah. like, is this really a career that I can do? Like, are people really going to want me? So... I was like, man, I got to get got to get my name out there right now so I can be good. So like two years before I graduate, I'm just like on art station. I, I did a few freelance projects. Um, I worked on this one game for a very short amount of time called uh, I think it was called Fantasium, something like that. I've made a few props for that game. It's like a fantasy type game. And um, I also worked on uh, this other game on Steam called Days of War for a few months i made some props and material for that game so i was happy i was getting stuff like on my resume before i graduated i felt like i was in a good place so um you know a few months before i graduate i'm just getting a bunch of art tests i'm like okay i got a bunch of art tests i guess i'm good if i'm getting art tests right so i'm like okay i'm passing these interviews i'm getting art tests man i take so many art tests i never got a call back I'm like, oh, my wow. God, like, what's going on? And there's some of those art tests yeah. I actually passed. Like, I know I passed it. Yeah. And um, 
So I would have a second interview after that. And I guess I just, you know, fucked up the second interview. And they just didn't want to hire me or something. Plus, I was in America. So, you know, it's always easier to hire someone in the country if you can. not So, I mean, that's probably a factor, too. And since I, you know, a bunch of factors. But anyway, so I graduate. Um, I don't I don't want to like. uh, Drag this on if I'm like, not really. No, 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 no. You're, you're yeah, good, man. Okay. That's that's that's, that's an interview. Is your platform to talk about your story? So okay. yeah, you take as much time as you all need. All right, all right, sweet. So I graduate December 2016. I don't have a fucking job, man. I'm losing my mind, right? I'm like, oh my god, dude. Like my life is over. I have to go to the military. Um, I was actually planning on going to the military. Like if I couldn't find a job after graduation, I would do it. I was so ready to just go to the military and just like abandon all of oh, this. Wow. But yeah. um. I ended up getting a job as a video editor at this uh, other place uh, near my school. Uh, one of my friends that I went to school with, uh, you know, hooked me up with that. And I was there for like a few months. And then I realized, why the fuck am I video editing? Like, I went to I spent thousands of dollars to go to school to learn, you know, game art. And I'm not even doing this. So why the fuck did I go to school? Why did I just put myself in debt for no reason? So I was like, okay, I got to fucking chase my dream. So I ended up leaving that. And I just worked on, at this time, I didn't have too much on my portfolio. Um, I had like one or two environments on there. And I was like, I need to make something dope because obviously I can't get a job with what I have in my portfolio. Otherwise I would have had one already. So that's when I got working on my Hunter's Manor scene on my art station. And I was like, right, okay, yeah. I need to, my next environment has to get me a job. If this doesn't get me a job, I'm going to the military because there's really nothing else for me to do. So yeah. I spent like a month and a half working on this environment. I'm like, man, like this shit has to be fucking good. So I'm working through it. I go through so many emotions, dude. I'm like, this is awesome. The next day, I'm like, man, this fucking sucks, man. I'm going to fail. I'm not going to get the job I want. <laughs> and I'm like, it's just back and forth constantly, dude. Like when you're working on a project, you go through that blog out stage, you can't really see the end result so often all the time. And you're just like second guessing yourself. And then, you know, eventually I got to a point where I was like, okay, this is looking the way I want it to look. This is probably going to, you know, do it, like do it for me. So I finished the scene. Um, it did really well. Like a lot of people liked it. I was like, okay, I, I think I fucking did good. So I started applying everywhere, dude. I fucking applied literally to every studio I could think of. So yeah. I got a lot of callbacks too. I was like, okay, this is it. I'm going to fucking do this. So I get a bunch of callbacks. I actually fucked up here because I took way too many art tests that I could handle. I was getting so many art tests to the point where I had to drop some of them. Like I had to email the, the studio and tell them I wouldn't be able to finish it because I was just getting so much. I was just overwhelming myself. But at the same time, I was like, I was just grabbing everything I could because this was my last shot and I didn't want to, you know, fuck this up. So I was just grabbing everything I could. And then I had to let some of those projects go because, you know, it was too much. And then I ended up looking at um, CyberConnect's 2 website because I wanted to go to uh, Japan. Remember I told you that uh, I was interested in working as like an English teacher in Japan. Yep. And I was like, okay, I kind of want to go to Japan too. So Mm -hmm. let me just see what kind of game studios are in Japan. or Like if they're even hiring. So I went to CyberConnect's 2 page and I saw that they just opened a studio in Montreal and they were looking for artists. I'm like, oh, all right. So I apply. And like a week later, I get like an email saying they're interested in having an interview. So I'm like fucking excited too. I'm like, oh snap, like they actually replied. So, yeah. You know, I go through an interview. It was actually scary because there were like three people interviewing me on Skype and I'm just by myself. So I just feel like the con, like I felt like they were just like staring at me, like staring into my soul. I'm like, oh my God, man, this is too much for me. This is just too much. Yeah. And, um, so there were the it was the lead environment artist there because I applied as an environment artist, and then there was the lead of the studio, like the studio manager who doesn't speak any English, just Japanese, 
and the translator. So, you know, there's the guy who doesn't speak English, the translator, and the lead environment artist, and they're all asking me questions. I'm freaking out because... I felt like this is a studio that has made one of my favorite games, which is the Sewers Rat. And I'm just like, I'm just fucking freaking out. And the Naruto game. So I'm freaking out like, man, this actually happens. Like, this is insane. So I go through the first interview and it goes really well. And I'm just like, man, I hope they call me back. I just fucking hope they call me back. Like a week or two pass and they call me back and they tell me they want to have a second interview with me. So I'm just like freaking out, dude. I'm just like screaming. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, man. Like they want me back for another interview. <laughs> and um, the day comes and dude, like my heart is just like thumping, dude. Like my heart's not even beating at this point. It's literally just like fucking thumping, dude. Like I'm just yeah. so scared to not fuck this up. So yeah. The second interview comes, I get on Skype again, and at this point, it's even more intense than the last one because not only are all three people were there from the last interview, but there's also the CEO of the company and two more other people, and we're just like three-way on Skype at this point. And, dude, it was just intense, dude, having all these questions like thrown at me. Half of them don't speak English. I'm just like, oh my god, dude! Like, I don't know what's going on. So, what what, what were they asking you? Kind of like with the more intense stuff. Was it more just your actual what process breakdown of what question you were doing? Was it intense? It was just so many people. I felt like it was. I think there were like five or six people there. And I felt like it was just like six against one. <laughs> like, oh, wow, and, yeah. Because I've had like I been in a lot of interviews and I've actually get like given interviews myself when I was at my video editing uh uh studio. So I've given interviews so I know like when someone interviews you mm. really what people are looking for the is the thing to not hire you. Like yeah, they're not basically. really like they know you're good because you wouldn't be in the interview if you weren't good. They're really just looking for a reason to not hire you at that point. So I'm like, there's six <laughs> different brains on this, like in this meeting, looking for a reason to not hire me. I can't give any of them a reason. God. So that's just yeah. what's going through my brain. I'm probably like overthinking because I overthink a lot. So I'm just like, fuck, man, like I'm going to lose this. I'm going to fucking lose. Uh, so no. they're asking me yeah. questions. But I felt really good, though, at the same time, because I felt really confident in my skills and it was a company I really resonated with because of the work that they've already done. And I really love Japanese culture. So it just, it just, it was just like really, I just felt really good at the same time. So I was really confident and um, I did it and the interview ended and I was just like, man, like, this is it. Like they're going to call me and tell me I got it or they're just probably going to ignore me forever. I don't know. So like, a week later, no, two, I think two weeks later, man, I'm taking a shower, right? And my phone's on the sink. I hear my phone. Like, I'm just waiting. Like, every day during these two weeks, I'm just waiting for an email. So I hear my Gmail notification go off as I'm taking a shower. I, dude, I get out of the shower and I grab my phone, dude. And I'm looking and I see, it says, like, CyberConnect2. I'm like, oh, my God, dude, my heart is just fucking beating like crazy. I open the yeah. email. And it starts off like, congratulations. Like, you've been a Wow. I'm like, oh, my fucking... Dude, I start screaming, <laughs> dude. I start, dude. I'm, like, fucking dripping, like, soaking with water because I was in the shower. I'm, like... I'm, I was, like, living with my parents, too, at the time. So, I was, like, screaming. I was, like, mom, like, they can't, like I got the job, mom. <laughs> and, um, so, man, I was just so fucking happy, dude. Like, man. Yeah. See, that's the thing I was noticing with like with guys who you know had worked in Blizzard twenty years and whatever else. Like, it's hard to recapture that emotion of getting your first job, and like that's why that story was so fucking awesome to listen to because, like, you can hear still the passion in your voice of like I wanted to get that job, and when you got it, you were like, so excited because, yeah, everybody's first. Like, I know so many people I've interviewed, so many people I spoke to in industry talks and went to these events and spoke to people from, you know, EA Blizzard or these all these places, Ubisoft. 
and everybody's like first job was like the one they remember the most because it was like like you said like people always think oh, i'm never getting in the industry i'm never like i've just recently came from an interview for a games company as well and i didn't get it but like i can still remember play by play like what they were asking me and what i had done when i went in and because you analyze that stuff so much because your first job is so important to you and i think it's different for you as well because like your first job was like almost with your dream company and that's rare because some people will work like you know like a mobile game studio or something smaller before they go and get a bigger studio but yeah you've kind of went straight to AAA which is rare and, and super awesome and I can obviously tell by the the quality of your work that it's well deserved because your stuff is like you do stuff like I want to do you, like your portfolio is like what I want my portfolio to so like later on I will be I will be nudging you for some, some tips and some some mentor sessions but um but yeah that's why I love interviewing people who are just in the industry because yeah you could hear the excitement in your voice and that's what I think people need to cling on to when you know they're going to interviews and they're not getting successful you know you've, you've still got to hold into that why do I want to work here why do I want to work in the industry I need to remember that so so yeah so it's, it's it was awesome like it was really intense for me too because I was living with my parents and this job was out of the country so that meant like not only did I get a job working at a AAA studio like I'm gonna have to move out of the country and live by myself for the first time yeah so wow my life was gonna change you know so it was really intense I'm just like yo this is crazy yeah and you nearly died in a snowstorm I mean talk about life experience (laughs) <laughs> every like i think the lowest temperature i've experienced here was like negative 22 degrees fahrenheit or something and oh my like, god wow dude, I... doesn't even get that cold in scotland i think the lowest we've had it is like in celsius like negative three negative five degrees celsius no, it's and, um... like, it can literally kill you bro <laughs> you got, like, yeah, yeah oh, you would literally die like oh wow yeah so you've been through school you've got your first job can you kind of summarize like your first six months working? Like how is it as a job being what you expected? Have you been doing stuff you thought you'd be doing or? Okay. So yes and no. Okay. When I was in school, I tried so hard to learn every single thing that came out. So I was using Maya and Photoshop and ZBrush really. And then yeah. I see Quixel come out. This is like 2014, 2015. Um, I hear about Quixel, like Indu and Dido and all that. And I'm just like, yo, like, this is what texturing is going to fucking be now. So I'm like, okay, I got to learn this now. So then I'm using that. And then I see Substance come out. And I'm just like, oh yeah, what the fuck is this, dude? Like, everyone's using this. So now I got to learn this. So I'm learning Substance Painter, Substance Designer. And... Marmoset come like Marmoset toolbag comes out. I'm like, oh snap! Like, what's this? So like, I'm literally like hopping on everything that comes out, and I'm just like, okay, I need to learn all this because when I get a job, they're probably gonna expect me to learn all this. So, of course. you know, you need to when you're looking for a job, you need to make yourself look as track as attractive as possible. But you know, now that I've actually you know got the job and you know been working for six months, you really. Yep. Well, I'm not going to – I'm just speaking from in my experience. I don't of course, use yeah. a lot of the s- software that I thought I would be using. Like, it's completely different. And I don't want to speak too much, like, on the details because, you know, like, some of this stuff is, like, secretive. But, um, of course. Yeah, like, a lot of the stuff that I really don't need to use. Like, you can use it if you want to, but, you know, depending on the project, the art direction and all that – you kind of have to follow certain guidelines and a lot of the stuff you think you'll be using, you probably won't be using not, I'm not going to say you won't be using them at all, but you know, depend. it really depends on the project because every project requires something different. So, I mean, it's always good to learn as much as you can because, you know, for your personal work, you know, it's going to help you there and you never know when you'll need to use it, especially if you go to a different studio that probably uses those tools but um mm-hmm. is it what i expected it to be i expected it to be a lot more intense i felt like i felt like i worked so hard like when i was in school man like i didn't go out at all dude like i literally just went to school yeah. came straight home did the same exact thing like i just worked on my stuff literally every day 
I mean, I procrastinated and played video games a lot too, but I really did not go out, dude. Like, I really just mm. watched tutorials all day, every day. I'd go to bed at like three, four, five, sometimes six in the morning, dude, just yeah. working on stuff. And I'm just like, I have a lot of unfinished projects too, which I'm not really proud about. Yeah. But like, man, I have so I many unfinished projects. It's insane. And now that I'm actually like working, I feel like it's a lot more chill than it is because I really stressed myself to the point where this is not as intense as I, you know, made it for myself before, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I think, yeah, I was going to say just quickly, but the guys I've spoken to is very similar. You know, even the guy who I'm working with closely, who's kind of, you know, almost mentoring me, you know, he was saying the same, like, he worked really hard to basically get in the industry. And then once he was in, yeah, know that it's not a hard job to do. You know, they've still got to go to work 95. But, you know, it's no like when he was killing himself, learning stuff and learning tools to get in the industry. You know, once you're in, you kind of, you know, you learn at your own pace. And, and there is times where, you know, like he's working on, a, you know, a, a kind of AAA project and he kind of just manages his own time. You know, there's no real super harsh deadlines like he just kind of you know if he has something to do he just kind of plans it out and he has his own process and the studio trusts him basically obviously because you know he's, he's an accomplished artist so he just kind of gets to you know pick and choose you know what he thinks is best for the project but yeah it's not like when you're learning and and um you know you have to basically um you know like you said you're up to six in the morning learning stuff and you're learning every tool there is but then when you get in a studio because of their pipeline you'll maybe only use two or three programs specifically because you know you can't deviate too much from that because licenses cost money and people have to learn new software so yeah yeah also um damn i forgot what i was gonna say oh yeah yeah um, yeah, oh, yeah i also have realized how easy it is to just i i don't know if this is the right term but like be stagnant or just be like not really feel the need to upgrade yourself, I feel like, if that makes any sense, because I feel yeah. like it's so, like, man, I don't even know really the right term. Like, I really don't need to force myself to learn too many new things at this point because I don't need to use them at work. So it's like I can yeah. understand why some artists just get into the industry and just, like, plateau off because – it's just so easy to just like not really have to learn all this new shit. Like there's something new coming out like every month. I feel like um, I'm at the point where I do not want to fall into that, uh, that pocket or whatever. Like I really don't want to get into the situation where I just work and then I come home and I really don't really do anything. Like I just go to work, do my little thing and then come home and then like, you know, repeat the same routine. And now I'm really just like with the whole YouTube thing I'm doing and everything, like I'm trying to find other ways to use my, I guess, use my skill. Um, yeah. I just, I mean, look, I, I can understand it because, you know, I know what you're saying. Like, because you've learned so much before you go into the studio and the studio is utilizing those skills you've already learned then yeah you don't have to really learn new stuff um on top of that because yeah it's like you know you can basically get to a point where you can almost relax a little and yeah. you know like i think that i think the industry for me because like i'm going to you know um, trojan horses at unicorn industry workshops you know imag in paris and these places are full of speakers for like you know like uh like people who have I've idolized all these years and you see them go and do these talks about this amazing career they've had. And then you meet the, like the 500 people or the thousand people that go to this event and they're all super passionate, but like the industry is full of millions of people and no, every single person, no, every single artist in the world has to be like constantly killing themselves. There are some people I know in the industry who like, go to their job 95 they come home and they just play with their dog or they go walks and or they play there's games there's nothing wrong with that either like some people like if you're like no. if you're happy like yeah then you know this is your life you're happy like you're good Gosh. but me, me yeah. part, like me in particular like i tried so hard to get into the industry i feel like it was such an impossible task for me i would never achieve it so i didn't even really look beyond what i would do after i got 
Go on in. Yeah. So this was the ultimate goal for me. So yeah. I reached that goal and it's like, what the fuck do I do now? No, yeah. Because because that whole getting into the industry becomes your whole identity. And you know, the way the industry's built because, you know, things like Art Station and Eight Level sit every day and publish stuff like look at this new guy and look how awesome he is and he's only 19 years old and 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 that for me also eats at me because i had a career as an engineer till i was 28 and then i left to go to school for five years and now i'm looking for that first job but like i'm then coming into the industry in my 30s when people like i said like you know your age and obviously people who are like 19 20 who are doing amazing things are getting hired it makes me feel like I'm just no good enough and I'm not doing enough. Um, like even Pablo Dominguez, I met him at Anderson Workshops last year and he's working at ILM in London on like Star Wars and he's 23 years old. And I'm like, oh my God. But, it was not even that, man. You know, he, like, how, okay, so how, how long have you been do, doing 3D? I, would, I mean, I've done some in, in university and then I've done some projects in Finnish, but I would say seriously doing 3D since November. November. I would so say. November 2018. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I think it's really bad to compare. I compare myself a lot, all the time. But yes. it is really bad to compare to anyone else but yourself. You know? Because of course. Everyone has their own uh, journey. Everyone experiences things differently. Everyone has their own time for things. And everyone processes the world and things that they go through completely differently. So, And I think, yeah, I used to say that now years obviously since I've, I've kind of mellowed and, and learned the industry but i've said that it isn't really wise to compare yourself to other people but try and compare yourself to an older version of you yeah. like where were where were you like a year ago what were you doing know what everybody else was doing um and i sent you this will be like a i've never really done this on the interview but like i've sent you something on discord and that was like my latest 3d piece i'd done um and again probably since yeah like i said in november i've been doing 3d and when i made that um, you know, I felt like, you know, oh, that was that was good. That was okay. Like compared to, you know, like I say, is, you know, uh, I'd only been properly modeling for three or four months, but, you know, that 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 payphone was like the culmination of a couple of months speed modeling. And, um, and yeah, like I, I compared myself to like, what, what was I like when I was building things in, in October, November? And it's definitely for me a level up, like a definitely an improvement from where I came from. So, that's really all you have to see it as. You just have to, you know, constantly try and be better. Like, I try and be better than I was every, you know, from the next day. I try and be better than I was yesterday and constantly try and upgrade. And when you look at it like that, you really can see improvement when you're actually just focusing on yourself instead of other people. But I think it's good to, I think it's also good to, um, you know, see where other people are at. Not to compare yourself, but to see the kind of, you know, quality bar that you need to hit. And yeah, I think something that's kind of misunderstood a lot is the competitiveness of this industry or just being competitive in general, because this is a very competitive industry. And, yeah, of course. Yeah. you know, when you're going in that interview, you're basically going up against everyone else who wants a job, dude. And yeah, I mean, I'd, I I talked to the guys at my old university when I went to do a talk there, and I said to the guys, you know, I mean, what was funny actually was the first question I said was, hands up everybody who knows what art station is, and I think I got maybe three people put their hand up, but, you know, I was saying to them, when you graduate, you're not just competing with everybody in this class, not even just everybody in Scotland, but like everybody world. in the world. And you know, so, I luckily, I realized, I realized that really quickly, like when I was in school, I wanted to be the best, like... I'm a very competitive person. I don't put anyone down like, oh, I'm better than this person or you suck. Like, I don't do any of that. But I'm also yeah. very competitive. Like, I want to be the best. So if I know there's someone else in my class that is, like, really good at, uh, you know, yeah. making stuff, I'm like, yo, I got to beat this guy. Like, I got to be better than this guy. But yeah. it's me doing this in order to really push myself to – you know, really be better. I really don't care, like, if I'm better than this guy or not. It's not that. It's just that competitiveness just really helps, man. Like, even, like, you see it. I don't watch sports at all. Like, I'm really, I'm not really a sports guy. But in sports, dude, like, it's the perfect, like, example of that. Like, the competitiveness of sports really encourages athletes to, 
you know, work out more, like work out harder and be better. Like it really, I feel like that's a really good example of like the competitive, like how good competitive being competitive is because um, yes. the world itself is just a competitive place. Like you can't not, like you can't just ignore that because I know like I would go to school with some people and um, they'll, they'll know I'm competitive. Like when the teacher gives like a, you know, an assignment to do something, I'm like, yo, like, I'm going to kill it, man. Like my shit is going to be dope. Yeah. Like, and I'm saying this because I want other people to feel my energy so they can also, you know, want to make something and we can kind of just yeah. like, uh, you know, use each other's energy as like a stepping stone to just like really make great stuff. But some people don't see it like that. They see it like, oh, this is not a competition. I don't want to compete with you. But like, dude, like, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, what do you mean, yeah. man? Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's even a thing where people misunderstand the competitive nature is, like you said, you don't want to you don't want to be nasty to people. You don't want to like kind of lead over people like I'm better than yeah. you. You want to have like almost camaraderie where you'd inspire another, and that's like that's the reason I go to these events. That's the reason I started the podcast. That's the reason I started making things and and talking to students because like I want to share my passion with everybody else. And people always say when they meet me, they can like they can sense my passion about the industry. And I'm like I was always like, how can you sense that? But like talking to you. I can totally feel the same energy that I have when I talk about art and games and the industry. Um, you're just so excited about it and you want to share it with everybody. And, you know, it's it's difficult when you're in a, a school or a class when people don't have that energy and then it almost saps a little of your energy yeah. and makes you less enthusiastic. But, um, you know, I, I think even when I was in uni, I was actually the opposite. I was almost down on myself and out in my skills and spent a lot of time like I, I didn't even really I could never decide what I wanted to do I was because it was so much right I was like I originally wanted to do 2D concept and I was like oh, I could do 2D characters or I could do this or, or VFX and and it was only you know like I graduated last July and then in like I spent like the summer going to a couple of events including teach you and then when I went to teach you I actually got a, a really rare chance to speak to Raphael Grisetti from Sony Santa Monica and I was talking to him about like his 3D sculpts and I was like, man, I'd always love to do 3D and I think it'd be really cool. And but I'd, I feel like it's too late. And, you know, he was like, man, just do it. Like, you know, spend a couple of months like really, you know, killing it and see how you feel about it and then make a decision. Don't just stand here and be like, oh, I don't know. It might be too difficult because then you'll never do anything. And then even then later on, I spoke to one of my friends, Spirit, and, and he was kind of the cultural heart of the community. And he was like, he basically said something to me that made a lot of sense. He was like, you're someone I've known a lot of years who's spent um, his time like standing on the sidewalk looking both ways but never crossed the street and I was like yeah that is kind of me like because I was like oh, I'd love to do that or that but I don't know and never spent time or effort but since I've been hardcore the 3D stuff since November like I have seen an improvement I have seen a thing that now I enjoy doing it I think it's awesome and I like creating environments um, so yeah it's like the passion will get you through so much but you really need to try and make a decision at one point about what you want to do as well and yeah, and then for 3D artists, it's also, I've heard that, you know, eventually you'll specialise beyond 3D environments because then like, people also go into, like, 3D environments plus tech work and they make tools or they go into 3D and they do a little bit of concept as well or texture work or... So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely an industry where you have to have a passion and then, of course, you've made it and, you know, you're working there now, so... Yeah, I mean, it's never too late to start anything honestly like it's never too like how old are you i'm 33, 33. now so, so yeah. look at this is how i look at it 33 right yeah out of mm -hmm. 100 years like lifespan you're only 33 percent of the way there you're not even halfway man yeah like, there's yeah. so much time and the way technology is dude like we will live longer yeah. so yeah. honestly like anytime i have like an idea or like a passion or something i just go and just like i try and do it immediately because yeah of you course. know guessing like or assuming like oh man this is not gonna work it's too late for me man like you're just wasting time like yeah <laughs> and, man dude like i've wasted so much time doing this and now yeah i try so hard to not do this at all like i just, waste time and yeah, utilize like, yeah honestly i just do and then think after but not, you know, yep. like, uh, I'm still aware. Like, I have a lot of awareness. So I'm still, like, you know, seeing where things could go wrong or, you know, I'm aware. But I do 
and then thing after because there's this thing that I have a lot and I am still trying to overcome this. This is why I have a lot of work in progress, uh, progress uh, projects is because I try to analyze everything, which eventually paralyzes me and I'm just not doing anything. Yeah. So yeah. I just try and, you know, I have an idea or something. Let me just do this and then figure out my way through this as I'm doing it. And um, I think that's just a really good way of, you know, how to kind of go through life in general. Um, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, it's, it's also part of this book. I'm, I'm sure I saw it years ago. It was called um, The Three Second Rule. And it was basically um, where you uh, say, you, you know, you want to go to the gym most days, but you're always like, you know, the more you think about it, you're like, oh, you know, I've got to pack my bag and I've got, to, you know, the, the woman who wrote the book was like, well, within, I guess, five seconds, even within five seconds, you should just be like, right, I'm going to go do it. And you go do it and you don't think too much because the more you think the more your brain almost shuts you down because your brain is built to keep you safe so you know rather than view the disappointment or view the hardship it just was like oh well maybe no but if you within five seconds are like right let's go do it then it basically trumps everything else dude like that is a really good example because i okay so last month right i joined the gym yeah you know how many times i went to that gym (laughs) <laughs> oh god yeah not not a lot i'm guessing i went one time dude. one time I went oh once. god yeah i canceled my membership the following month <laughs> oh jesus yeah. Like, yeah. i would be like man i need to go to the gym and then i'd be like man i gotta get my stuff ready i gotta go walk to the gym it's fucking cold outside then i gotta be there for like yeah. an hour or two and then i gotta walk back and then it was like man i could be doing 3d shit or doing something else in that amount of time no no i mean the, 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 the yeah the of course, the thing I found, like, because I've just lost a lot of weight recently, like, I was I was quite heavy and I kind of shifted a bunch of weight in a, a short time, but the way I found it was the easiest way to do it was to find something you love doing that is also exercise. So for me, like, I love cycling. So I used to go out and, and ride my bike, you know, 20 kilometers a night. And for me, that was my exercise. And, you know, because not everybody, I think, functions in a gym. Like, for some people, I know it's like it's rock climbing or it's martial arts or it's like, you know, fencing club or whatever. But, you know, I think finding that thing that like is your passion and 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 uh, sportsmanship is like more important than going to a gym because a gym is so stagnant, so standalone. Like even in the gym, I think when I you know I've joined recently as well, I've been a couple of times, but I think what the thing I'll take away from that gym is because they do all their classes free, so they do like yoga and they do yeah. CrossFit and they do all this kind of stuff. So I'd rather go and do the classes than sit in the gym on my yeah. own pumping weights because yeah. like I like the idea of being in a group and doing things together. Yeah. So. I think that's um, another thing. So be, like, my gym didn't really have all that. Like, it's pretty boring. Like, I have to, yeah, I feel like yeah. working out by myself, honestly. Yeah, you kind of need people. I think because we're pack animals by nature, right? So you need people to to be beside you to help you more. It's the same with art, right? When people start in art, they get into drawing groups or they go into like like with me and you. Like, you know, I set up the the Discord for those artists so we can all just back and yeah. forth and you know feed off each other's each other's passion. So, you know, I think you need that. You need some kind of study group mentality within people to help push you because yeah, like, you can't always do it yourself um, another thing like you do you play shooters like F, uh, first shooters? more uh, yeah overwatch stuff like okay, that yeah so my first like game that i really got hooked on was call of duty right so i would play call of duty against like bots offline right and yeah. i'm just like man like this shit is easy <laughs> then I go to my uncle's house and we play online against actual like people. And I oh, realized the fucking skill gap that was there. I thought I was Jesus, good yeah. until I started playing against other people. And I'm just like, man, I actually fucking suck. And this is, I feel like this is, uh, this shares similarities with this like art and just like anything in general, because if you're, just focused on yourself and not really looking like what's out there in the world. Of course, like, yeah. You're gonna think your shit is really good. You yeah. see other people, and then you're gonna see the competition and just like where you need to be, and then you're gonna be like, "Fuck, man! Like, I really have a long way to go." So I think it's really important yeah. to involve yourself, just like in our communities and stuff like that, and also make of friends course. too. Making friends yes. is so important. Like, I think it's making friends is just as important as working on your skill. Yeah, because I mean, like, so many people I've talked to about 
people coming into the industry, they've said that they would rather hire someone that they felt they could chill next to for eight hours a day um, and be, like, okay, as opposed to somebody who's, like, incredible at art but is an asshole. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, if you're working next to somebody for eight hours a day and the guy's just insufferable and you can't really talk to them, like, what is the point of them being good? Because if you can't communicate in a team environment, then you're just fighting the wrong battles. You know what I mean? Like, um... Fuck, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, t- basically making friends oh, yeah, yeah, is, yeah, is, so is important. Also, yeah. like, another thing about that, like, all my opportunities that I've ever gotten in games has been through yeah. a referral of someone else. Yeah. And, man, like, I'm not saying, like, go on the art station and like make friends to you know you know use them for opportunities but generally make friends but they will give you opp- there will be opportunities so you need to always like of course. be aware of that yeah no i mean definitely like um one of my friends ian like he like i met him through a map paint academy but when i thought like oh what do map painting but like we've stayed friends and, and ian's worked at frame store and npc in a couple of places and now he's helping me with opportunities to do 3d for other people because he's like, I know this guy who's doing this thing and he needs somebody for 3D. And da-da. So, yeah, like, I'm not asking him to go out and give me work, but he's like, because we're friends and I've, you know, like, I've sometimes helped him with things or I've done things for him. He's like, well, he wants to repay the favor, he wants to help me. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's super important because, yeah, what else are you going to do? You can't be on an island in a bubble on your own. You need to go out. And that's and why it, our station is great. And it I makes it really harder to get a job too when you don't have any friends because oh, the guys course, who yeah. has friends and they refer their friends, they're going to get picked first all the time. Yeah, 100%. The- yeah, and ArtStation's a good... That's why I say it's students really early. Get on ArtStation, look at what's been put out. You know, like, obviously, your stuff doesn't have to be that good straight away, but it gives you something to aim for. Like, it gives you a bar that is high enough that, like, well, my stuff, can I compare it to this yeah. person, right? Is it close enough? How close am I? You know, and 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 that helps you push because, like you said, if you when you make stuff in uni, people you can get an A. Like I got a, when I did my, I think my first ever three D environment, it was terrible. It was like one of the top ten worst uh, sci fi corridors I think I'd ever made, or people had ever made in the history of sci fi corridors. But but like the guys at the uni were like, "Well, that's an A," and I was like, "Oh, great." But then if I'd show that to an employer, they'd be like, "Well, no, like it's it's, it's terrible." Like there's there was so much of that was just lighting and texture, and like the modeling was terrible so yeah like it's almost like yeah you've got to be in those communities and outside of the the bubble because you need to know what's relevant and current and what will actually get you a job as opposed to what will just look yeah like when i was working on my uh, first environments and all that like i would make friends with just people who are like on the same level as me and we would just talk and like share ideas you know help each other and i would see like growth in me and those people so like i see like all of us just like growing together and it's just like so dope because like i remember when i was doing this i had a friend who um we were like at the i felt like we were like at the same level and low-key like i saw him as like a rival <laughs> like I, yeah. Yeah. yeah every time he pulls this something i'm like yo like that motivated me to also do something sick and he eventually got a job at like uh insomniac and he tried to help me get a job there too but you know they didn't really go with me and um I saw another friend of mine get a job at Quicksilver, and I'm just like, yo, like, this is so dope, because I'm seeing all these guys just, like, fucking, like, entering the industry, and I'm just like, man, that's so sick. Like, I'm up next. Like, I have to be. And I feel like you're kind of a, well, you are, like, a product of, like, your environment, the people you talk to, like, who you're around. So, like, just surround yourself with people as hungry as you, and, yo, you're just going to get there eventually. Well, I mean, there's there's a saying that you are the sum total or average of the five people you spend the most time with. So, like, if you are hanging around with super negative people, then, yeah, sure, you'll be super negative. But then if you're surrounded by positive, motivated people, then, of course, you will then feed off that and want to be motivated and positive as well. So, yeah, that's that's, that's kind of why I'm starting to make this Discord thing and, and, and you know, uh, add people like yourself and Scott and Ian and, and make a community that, you know, we can compare stuff, we can share ideas, we can talk amongst and and Scott, like, you know, earlier Scott was saying, I've got uh, an idea for I'm doing some environment stuff, can I get your feedback? And you were like, sure. But yeah, that's that's great because, you know, that helps other people grow and then you bring people up and then you're, you're almost mentoring and teaching people. So yeah, it's, it's a whole cycle and, and, and I think it was it was uh, Scott Robertson said it, but I don't think it was his saying, but he said, you know, the the, the the 
product or the purpose of when you get up to the top is that you need to send the elevator back down. And I think that's very relevant because, yeah, you have to be able to bring the next generation up and make them better because then it, it takes the whole industry to another level and, and thrives and changes the, the learning method. So, so yeah, making friends is super important. Yeah, definitely, 100%. Yeah. So you've been there now for roughly six months and then obviously I'm I'm assuming, you know, you're planning to stay there. But then outside of your job, what's your next kind of big project? Is there anything else you're planning just now to be like your next kind of hurdle or is it YouTube? Or- yeah, so um, now I really don't know where I want to, like where else I want to go in the industry, honestly. Like to be 100%. I like doing this Yeah. Stuff, but I think where I am most, where, where I belong is, you know, teaching people, really. I find so much joy in that. And it's just, it's just super fun for me. So right now, my next goal is to just create the best game art course on the internet okay. for everyone yeah. to have access to. And um, yeah, because like when I went to school, I honestly feel like I school was a waste of time for me. In a certain oh, yeah. it actually, it wasn't a waste of time. It was a waste of money. Of it was course, a waste yeah. of money. Like I, dude, I graduated the best of my class, and first of all, I didn't even go to graduation because I just felt like it was kind of a <laughs> joke to me the fact that I got the like award for best of my class. Like, are you serious? Like, yeah, meaning like there's no way I fucking got that. You know what I mean? Like, cause I saw like where my where I was in terms of like skill level and where I needed to be. So I'm just like, yo, this is retarded. Yeah. And I just don't want uh, other people to fall victim to spending so much money going to school thinking that's the only way because it's really not the only way. You could like, yeah, yeah. It's 2019, man. Everything you need to know is on the internet. Like it's on the oh, internet. Sure. Like I've never had an interview where my degree even mattered yeah i was never asked about my degree in any interview and i've been to a lot of interviews yeah. so it's really just a waste of money honestly it's a waste of money yeah yeah um but yeah i think i think more on top of that is that degrees are not uh, a waste of time and money per se but i think for our industry it definitely is yeah like, because well, all degrees. Like, like if you're going to school to be like a surgeon or like a lawyer and all that, then yeah, you definitely need a degree. Like it makes sense. Or, of course, or yeah. something like art or something you could just learn online. Like, yeah, you don't need a degree for that. Um, of course, yeah, yeah. But so I mean, no, I, I agree with you. It's, it's you know, one of you, Mark Burnett, and he'd been at Blizzard since he was like in his early twenties. You know, he was saying that you know he never got a degree, he never got um, any kind of formal education, and. And yeah, now he he basically had worked at Blizzard for so many years and has his own company, but he's just done it off his own back. He's just, you know, learned stuff online or, or practiced and and then made, you know, um made his own career out of it. But yeah, it's it's not a it's not a thing where you need to be um qualified in any way officially, you know, as long as you I can physically I, do the, the job. The only exception in terms of schools for me is like Nomen. I think Nomen is really the only school I can think of that is just like cool. worth, yeah, worth the money. Definitely. Worth the money. Because they have a high placement rate in the industry and they fucking know what the fuck they're doing. Like they know. I think it's definitely yeah, it's it's one of these things, like it's the same with Art Center in Pasadena, like in, in, in California. Like, yeah, they have some of the the bit because a lot of their teachers are people who are sitting in a job in the industry. Like a lot of guys who teach at Nomen are like teaching on their lunch break from like Naughty Dog or Blizzard. Like they're coming from the studio to teach. And sure, when you've got that caliber yeah. of teacher, then of course you're going to learn so much more. But then when I was dealing with people the, who were lecturers, you know, I mean, in their own right, well-educated. So, you know, they had degrees and, and PhDs, mostly PhDs and, you know, things that weren't related like TV or, or some kind of science and they've never worked a day in their life in, in the industry, then yeah, sure, like it, it makes it so much harder. I think, I think the best thing you had when we were in that course particularly, we had a guy who had been and worked on, I think, a Need for Speed franchise with EA and then got made redundant, but he came back and, and taught um, at the school and he was our best source of information at times because, yeah, he'd been out and worked, so we got to ask him a ton of questions and, you know, um, that was rare and I think that's more what courses like that need. They need... People, you know, like, I mean, even when I was doing my third year and I got lucky to go and work at Axis and Axis Studios in Glasgow and, 
you know, when I was there, they were working on Destiny 2 and, and Warhammer and, and the League of Legends trailer. And, you know, seeing that caliber, that quality, definitely in my third year, I was like, well, now I know what I need to hit. And, and yeah, like, it's just, if people had walked out of our university class into Axis and saw what actually goes on, then, yeah, they would have got a shock because, like, there was people, like, you probably know yourself, there was people who got the, the assignments and never done them or just didn't give a shit or tried but just done enough to get past. And, you know, at times I, at times that was also me, I'm, I'm going to admit, you know, yeah, I didn't push myself because, you know, I think it was more even just, no, the fact that I didn't want to do it, it was more just the fact that, like, I was like you, it's, you overanalyze things to a point, you paralyze yourself from even starting um, and that takes a while to get over. And, you know, I think for me, it was it was finding a discipline that I really enjoyed. And I think I haven't really found that till I left uni and now I'm doing 3D and all of that. But yeah, it's, it's it's very hard. But yeah, definitely like university, I think in any series is what you put in it. Like if you're in those classes and you're sitting in an art station every day and you're learning tutorials on top of your work, then sure, you'll get more out of that course than any other people. But if you just sit and do your university work and nothing yeah, else. Yeah, it's definitely not going to be enough. Like you can't, you can't expect to get everything you know out of school because that's just not how it works. Like you actually need to put in the practice. And I got to admit too, like when I was in school, the way my grading, like the grading system was in my school was very weird. We had homework assignments, classwork assignments, midterm exam, and final exam. I didn't do any of my homework assignments and I probably did like half of the classwork assignments. And the reason is because the midterm exam and the final exam made up like 80% of the grade put together. So all I focused on was those exams. I did not focus on, I didn't do any homework, dude. I didn't do any fucking homework. I Every time I started a new class, my focus was on the exam. 100% every time. Because my main goal was to just get in the industry. Like, I just wanted to make dope projects. And I wanted to spend as much time as possible on my exams. Because those are the things that I'm actually going to put in my portfolio. So that's yeah, really all I focused on. But that's just the way my school was structured. And, um, yeah, I just kind of took advantage of that system and just really made it work for me. Um, yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, it's, it, 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 like Noman, how I said, like, they're like, that's like one of the best schools. And I think it's actually worth it. But it's expensive and not everyone can move to California. So it's not accessible to yeah. everyone. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, because like, yeah, there's, I think one of their terms like one of their years roughly costs about twenty five thousand dollars and that's just for some people that's their entire education in four years like i don't think i even spent that in four years so um we're lucky across here we have very cheap affordable free education um and you know i know everybody has that at hand and and you know it's hard to justify going and spending you know, a couple of terms at Noman, like even I remember listening to an interview with Justin Fields, who, you know, has Ironclad Studios, but he's a 3D artist and he only went for, I think, two terms because it was all he could afford. But by then he had an opportunity to get a job. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a very hard thing to kind of balance, which is like, do I go and study at a more specialized school? Do I, do I spend the money? Is it worth it? Um, but like I said, you, you know, there's so much like the 80 level and art station and a couple other websites there's enough resources out there, even on YouTube. There's enough free yeah. stuff you can learn Man. without having to spend money. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, and you're and you're obviously you're you're pumping out some of that content. I mean, I think even that video that you put out about how to make money, you know, yeah. by selling your three D models. Yeah. I think within like half an hour, I was selling stuff. <laughs> dude, really? Like I'm, tell- <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, dude. Like so many people just don't know. Like you know, honestly, you do not need to work at a studio to make money. There's so many other shit you like so much shit you could do to make money and selling like project files or making tutorials on Gumroad and all that. Like that sells, man. Like that fucking sells. But it really depends on the person. Like some people don't like putting in all that work. Some people just like having, you know, instructions and just following those. Like it really depends on the person. But that is definitely a lane that is completely possible. Yeah, yeah. And then, like you said, like the the stuff you've been putting out on YouTube has has been getting like a lot of attention, and people have been watching your stuff. And and yeah, and you were on eighty level, and so I mean, you're doing the right stuff, man. And I mean, sometimes I know you can feel like, oh well, I'm not doing enough. Or but then if you're getting picked up by these kind of big websites, or people are seeing your stuff on YouTube, then um, like I think you even saw on your Facebook the other day, like a fan or somebody you knew like sent like a message or something to you. I was like, yo, that blew my mind when I got that voice message. I was like, yo. This is actually. I, I never, actually, I never, I never actually listened to it. What did they say? He was basically like, "Yo, like, thank you, man. Like, I really love what you're doing, and you're really helping me. 
and I kind of needed this. Uh-huh. And he was just basically thanking me for the content I was putting out, and I was just like, "Yo, are you kidding me? Like, this is actually uh-huh. what I'm like." I when I got that, I was like, "Yo, this is what I need to be doing with my life." <laughs> like, this yeah, 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 where I belong. So yeah. no, I was the same when I done my my first ever talk at my old university and like my LinkedIn basically got flooded with people messaging me like, yo man, like your talk, like, cause initially when I left it, I thought I was maybe a bit too harsh by saying like, it's super hard to get in there. You're going to need to work really hard. But um, when I told people all the stuff I was doing on the side, like my Hearthstone challenge and stuff, like doing a Hearthstone study card every day for a month and all the different projects, like they were emailing me like, yo dude, like, you know, you really put me on the track and you made me like totally like get serious about my career and, like reaffirm like what I was doing and where I need to go next. And I was like, oh shit, man. Like, you know, you get misty eyed. You're like, oh fuck. Like, oh, people actually enjoyed it. It was, oh my God. Yeah, man. So yeah, I think I'd like to do that at one point as well. I think I've got an industry. I'd love to mentor or, or help people. Cause so many people have helped me, you know, like including the guy who's kind of helping me at the moment. I mean, he it, 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 it can't help as much now because he's, he's back into production mode, but you know, even taking the month or two he did at the time to help me just push me initially, um, made all the difference and you know I probably have, I probably couldn't have got as far as I've got now without him helping and you know I, I can never repay the guy but you know like he said basically he started this for the same reason like he he knew universities and his district and his area were shit and he wanted to provide an education that was like a real education like a proper education so um, so yeah like I totally feel and, and relate to what you're saying where you want to help people because you know it's harder to get, you know, the proper education in school. So you need help also, outside like, of it. I just find more joy actually helping people and seeing them like feel Progress. good about like, you know, the new knowledge is just like, honestly, like making an environment that does really well for me does not like, it's just such on a lower caliber than act mm. like helping and seeing someone like use the information that I've given them. And yeah. man, it's just like a completely different feeling, dude. Man. Like, it, it just feels so good. So are you going to be setting up like a a patron to do mentorships or something like that? Is that in the plan or? I feel like mentorships are kind of like, I've actually kind of put that on pause right now because it's kind of, it's just really, I feel like it's not as efficient as I could make it. It's like doing one-on-one mentorships. So that's why I'm trying to create a game art course for, you know, everyone could actually use because I've noticed like with the mentor sessions I've had so far, it's kind of like the same thing. Like, everyone kind of has the right. same problem. So it's just like, I might as well just, like, make a whole course addressing a lot of these. Yep. Of course. Just, you know, knock it all at the park, like, in one go. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, that makes a lot of sense, man, because, yeah, when when I, probably the questions I would ever ask you about 3D art and environment art, it would be the same questions that everybody else would have, like, how do you build high to low poly, how do you texture UV, light, yeah, how do you work in game engine? Exactly, like, what I've been getting. <laughs> yeah, basically. No, I mean, I, the, one of the the better courses I saw for that, or I'm doing just now, is uh, Simon, oh, God, I forget the guy's name, Simon Bock or Bjork, oh. or, um, well, he, he's an artist uh, on Overwatch at Blizzard, oh. but he done a, a, a tutorial series, it was basically the military radio, I don't know if you've seen it, where it builds a 3D military green radio in high to low poly, but his 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 breakdown of that is like he builds like he does the the sourcing and, and setting up in the, the the reference files. Then high poly is like in four different parts. Then the low poly is in another four different parts, and then he bakes he textures UVs, works through Marmoset, renders in Photoshop. Like he basically takes you like through like start to finish a whole like this is how you make a game as- asset basically. Um, and yeah, so the, he's one of the the better ones I've seen because he also has other tutorials like the turret and stuff. But he's one of the more comprehensive people I've seen doing actual start to finish stuff um, on on asset creation. So yeah, um, like another thing yeah. with the mentor thing I've been doing. Um, I really don't want to get into the position where I really because I don't know everything. Like I don't know everything. Yeah. So I really don't want to get into a position where someone asks me how to do something and I'm not really that experienced in it. And, um, like, for example, like one of my sessions, like one of the students was like, he was interested in like, uh, doing vertex painting in unreal. And I was like, okay, I've done that before, but I'm not really that, uh, you know, experienced in doing that. So I didn't like, I let him know right off the bat to, you know, to kind of like folk, like let's focus on something else, but I really don't want to continuously like tell people, okay, I don't really know how to do this. So let's not do this. 
So I, that's why I really just want to put something out where I put all my knowledge out on the table and then people can just take what they want from it. Right. I don't want to kind of like, yeah. you know, box people into what they can ask me and just like, I just don't want to waste people's time. Yeah. It's really No, that makes sense. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, it's difficult though when you say like, you know, I, yeah, I don't want to waste people's time and, and you don't know everything, but you know enough. Like, and, I, and I'm not saying you could be teaching, you know, people who've been, who've worked in buzzers for 20 years, but you probably could be teaching people who, you know, are just in the industry or have, are still looking for that first yeah. breakthrough thing and, and want to do, you know, so yeah, there, there's probably a niche. Every artist who puts at courses will find a niche for yeah. that course. So, really just look, yeah, you, you know, I really just want my audience, like the people I'm actually like teaching stuff to be just like, you know, the students who are kind of like still in school or people who just graduated and kind of people still who just recently got into the industry, like not really the advanced guys because they know way more. Than yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, so no, I mean, that, that makes sense. And, and I think it's, um, I think it's basically just a, a thing where every artist needs to basically find a market or find a niche. And it, it can take some time, but yeah, once you find it, then sure, then it becomes a, a, a thing where you become, you know, uh, uh, the person, the, the idol, the leader for those people who want to make that kind of life and they want to study that kind of stuff. And and yeah, like, I mean, from what I've seen so far and, and considering how short a time you've been in the industry, sure. Like, there's going to be no question that you're going to be, you know, teaching really well at one point with people and, and, and making awesome courses because the stuff you're already putting out is is, is awesome. So, and then that's why I interviewed you and that's why you're here. But yeah, and then you're only just at the start of your career. So imagine, you know, in five years, you know, what your stuff's going to look like and how your portfolio is going to be different and who you who you can say that you've helped in the industry. And um, so, yeah, that, it's a whole thing. But yeah, man, you're going to do great things. I can already tell. Thank you so much, man. That actually means a lot. Oh, yeah. No, you're welcome, man. Don't worry. Um, okay, so we'll probably end it about there um, because, yeah, I, I roughly go for about an hour. I find at this point people start tearing off oh, okay. and, and falling asleep. So, um, but, you know, like, yeah, definitely because well, it's been great talking to you and having you on. So um, I'm sure we'll get you back on at one point because, yeah, like you said, you've only just started. So, um yeah, once once you get your next project or your next big thing, then sure, we'll have you yeah, back. And cool. and thanks, th thanks for giving up your time to come and talk, man. It was really awesome. Oh man, my pleasure, man. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> that's fine, dude. That's fine. Um, for those of you guys who are listening, uh, I'll put all of Moses' links in the bottom in the description. You can hit him up. Um, at one point, I'm sure if you need to ask any questions, I'm sure it'll be open to that. I mean, and um, answer every single question that I get. Every yeah. comment yeah. on my oh, YouTube, fine. literally every message, I answer every single thing. So I am reachable, 100%. Yeah, man, definitely. I'll put your YouTube and your art station and all that kind of stuff and, um, and then leave stuff below. And yeah, and even if you guys want to comment in this video, yeah, I'm sure you'll see that as well and, and reply to you. But um, yeah, man, just to, to thank Moses again for coming on and uh, for you guys for, for tuning in and listening. Um, basically just kind of stay with me. Um, the, the last month and a half has been difficult because, yeah, getting through the holidays and taking on a new discipline and, and learning and teaching it's it's been it's been hard but you know i'm coming to a point now where um i've kind of got a rhythm back into what i'm doing so hopefully we'll try and get at least one of these out every month if not every two to three weeks um and we'll have more people coming i have a couple of people lined up actually it's just nailing down times and dates and you know when they're free so um we'll get to organize but um yeah hopefully the first of many to come anyway um and you guys can also check us out on um depending how you're listening we're on youtube we're on spotify um we're on soundcloud uh, apple podcast services so you know however you guys want to listen to us there's multiple multiple ways and of course you know recently we're, we're just heading towards 1300 subscribers so um we're kind of getting there but I'll, I'll start pushing again and hopefully we can we can hit that 2k by the end of this year that's, that's my goal anyway so um so yeah okay um thanks again um like i said to uh moses and to uh, everyone who's tuned in and we will see you guys later thank you hey guys.